All right, we're live, we're live. Welcome guys, this is uh, part three of this sort of live, live stream tutorial series, um, which at the start no one knows that I'm starting, so basically there's no one gonna be in here right now, I would guess, but uh, this is just gonna be, we're just gonna get it basically into it for another few hours. Uh, today we should be doing warfare, sieges, um, you know, warfare diplomacy, things like that. Uh, again, I'll try to keep it sort of fairly basic. I won't get overly complex with what we're gonna be trying to do. But essentially we've got uh, like a border through here, this is Attica, and then we have an orc group over this way as well, where their capital is actually right in here. So at the moment, uh, let's actually start with the diplomacy as to what's actually going on with these different characters. You can see there, there's no, like, there's no little up arrows or down arrows next to them. There'd be a red down arrow if, if the uh, relationship is deteriorating, and there'll be a green up arrow if the, if the relationship is getting better. Uh, if we have a look at Attica, for example, and we just go across, we can see there that the Empire relations are negative 50, so there's just indifference between them. They're not really going to be all that ag aggressive with us. And so there's different reasons for these, um, for these sorts of uh, impacts. So uh, you can see its, it's total is, is negative 50. So the active modifiers, the empires with vassals, plus 150. I'll, I'll explain why these are in there. Uh, and then the passive modifiers is the alignment. She also likes that we're good for some reason. Actually, that may just be a, a global thing. Uh, Rainbow Clover also then impacts the, everyone's relationship with plus 100. And the threat level, she feels does feel threatened at negative 400. So we end up with a uh, with a total of um, of the passive modifiers of being negative 200, and the active modifiers of being plus 150. So that's our relationship with with her. Now, why we got things, for example, like the active modifiers, empires with vassals. Now, if we have a look at this one, we'll see that she actually has got a personality which is sort of random each game, of being a protective sage. And so this has different sorts of things. And so a vigilant ruler who prefers vassalization and magic. So her preferences are that she likes empires that have summoned units, and she also likes empires with vassals. So that's the two things that she actually likes. She dislikes empires with a larger domain, and she dislikes empires that start wars. And so they're the sorts of things where she will then be swayed based on, based on, those, um, on those personalities that she actually does have. So strategy informs their behavior on the strategic map. So Favius treaties, war must be justified, exploration and expansion. Now, if we have a look at the, at the orc, we can see this one is actually negative 200, but we may need to still get around, actually maybe we can sort of break through this one. I'll have a bit of a look and see. We may be able to just go straight for this one through here. Empire relations here are minus 200. If we go and hover over those, we then sort of see that the active modifiers, this one also likes empires with vassals but also empire with a larger domain, it doesn't like that. So we have a, only a plus 50 active modifier. And for the passive modifiers, the alignment, because we're good, we get a plus 100. Rainbow Clover, another plus 100. Uh, sent an insult, they, sent, they insulted us. And so that's a negative 50 for 14 turns. And then the threat level, they feel threatened. So this is actually now negative 400. And so overall, this one is now becoming, this one is now quite, quite aggressive against us. This one is also a protective sage, has, happens to have exactly the same personality traits as the other one. So uh, with this one through here, if we're wanting to sort of get into a, into a position where we can go to war with them, we've only got like a, a war justification which is minor, and so the justification behaviour that we actually have is, um, so the war justification is minor, De declaring war now means that the relations with non-allied rulers will be negative 50 for 20 turns, and um, evil character action will end up with negative 10 evilness. Now, if we're trying to protect our goodness, we've got at the moment we've got we're good at 15. We'll go down to good five rather than 15. So, it's fairly dramatic in terms of our good and evil aspect. So we may not want to be doing that one. Um, actually, we've got a question here. So, hi, Spark. Saying in one of my games, my ability to compliment um, an AI disappeared after we made a wizard bond, but they kept complimenting me. Is that a bug, or is it compliments operating uh, like uh, d denouements or denouncements? The um, I'm not sure to be honest. Actually, I, I tend not to do them because they end up costing more money than I find that they're worth. But we are going to do it today. We're going to actually do a pronouncement, and so we're going to sort of go across and try to get this raised up so that we end up with a not just a minor justification but a full justification. So the modifiers are, uh, so we're getting a plus 10 grievances back and through here of um, uh, Brogdor Rage Taker is claiming a great amount of territory with their city and Brogdor Rage Taker has insulted my empire. So we're getting, we're getting 
plus 20 for those uh, for those two just uh, those two aspects if we go back to Artica again and have a look and see what the justification here is she she uh, built a nearby outpost so that's the uh, the plus 10 that we actually have in through that side as well so what we'll do is we'll go back to um, to the orc I think um, there's a few different things we can do now if we declare a justified war those impacts are then going to have so de uh, de declare war on the other ruler with a minor war justification if I go and click on this one it doesn't automatically kick in it tells me what we've just had a look at through there and so you declare war on Bro uh, Brodgo uh, Rage Taker uh, depending on your war justification balance relations with other rulers and cities may be affected and so we have um, because it's only a minor one, relations with non-allied allied rulers will go backwards for 20 turns and the alignment will go down. So everything else is actually okay. Our forces are stronger, which is fine. We'll just abort that one for now. Uh, if we have a look at Artica as well, we can do the same thing, declare a justified war, but it's only a minor war. And so again, we have the same problem with the alignment. Now, if we're not justified, there's going to be much, much more cost to us over time. So we'll, uh, we'll leave that one where that is. And But what we will do is I think... God, do we go after Artica or would you go after him? If we have a, if we just press escape and just have a quick look at the actual map itself, it's going to be easier to go after her because it's right next to our territory. He's on the other side of the mountain, and we could go through this way, I guess, and deal with him. Maybe we do it that way. Let's actually go after after Axwood, after the city of Axwood, and uh, so we'll we'll do this one. But we'll come through this particular. Uh, route in through this other side. We do have one more city that we can go and grab and I might go and build another city back in here somewhere. So uh, as we sort of start to come through, there's a few areas. So we'll clear that out, out on our way through. So let's go and start the process of, of trying to raise our war justification from minor up to something a bit more meaningful. So if we go across to, uh, we can actually settle grievances where there's, like, this is yeah, the thing that he's actually taking too much um, value. He could buy that back from us, the trade value of 100, or we could click on it and then just forgive it. He can't. He actually can't afford it. But um, he, we could forgive the trans transgression, which would then make it so that he's more happy with us, and there's also going to be less justification. So depending on how we want to play, we can play different ways, but we actually want to ramp up the, uh, the war justification, and we don't want to give them any reason to, um, to have justification against us. So we go to pronouncements, and so we've got things, for example, like the Declaration of Friendship, which will try to sort of raise the friendship up to a plus 300. We've got Declaration of Rivalry. Now, this is one we're going to go and choose. I don't normally do this, but uh, I'll just show how it works. So a modifier that slowly decreases towards negative 300, already at negative 200 at the moment, will be added to your relations with the ruler. Any grievance gained against the ruler will be increased by 40%. However, making treaties becomes impossible and any existing treaties will be broken. It, unfortunately, it does cost 10 gold upkeep per turn, um, which it decreases by 10 gold for each additional declaration. So, uh, sorry, which increases by, by 10 gold for each additional de declaration. Um, so we're going to go and declare that one. It's going to cost me 200. I just, I don't know why there's an upkeep. I wish there wasn't. I think 200 is, should be enough. We do the declaration of rivalry. So declare a rivalry with another ruler publicly. So a modifier, we saw that we read that one through there. Um, and uh, yep, cost of 200 and then an upkeep of 10. We'll just click on OK. Done. And so um, you would declare your rival. Uh, very well, let us see who laughs last. So we now have a, an empire relations have gone um, up a little bit now at negative 215. And we can then start to sort of see that we're going to end up having um, the, uh, where is it, declaration of rivalry, negative 15 through this side. Now that's just going to keep on increasing a little bit over time. We can do other things as well. Um, now that we've actually got this rivalry, remember that basically anything we do with grievances, we're going to get a, a even more bang for buck in terms of the actual grievances. Now, it doesn't affect the ones that we already have, but if we go across to um, pronouncements, we can actually go and fabricate another grievance. So it fabricates a minor grievance against the opponent. This will enable you to start a justified war as normal, but it cannot be forgiven and will have a negative impact on your relations. Trying to uh, denounce an opposing ruler using a, a fabricated grievance will cause them to have a grievance against you. So we can do a denouncement. Um, so this is a, a verbal warning about 
It just affects the targeted ruler and their relations with the other AI rulers that you, that you have both met. So this will be with Artica. Ruler may only be denounced once uh, for each unique grievance a, a ruler has against them. So denouncing a ruler using fabricate um, grievances will cause them to have a grievance against you. There we go. Now I'm going to go and actually fabricate this anyway, just so you can sort of see what actually happens. This is going to then raise our fabrication amounts, but this is only for a minor one. So we just go and do that one. So fabricates a minor grievance against the opponent, so we're just making this up now. Um, and it's going to cost me 150 and 50 mana. Just click on OK. And so it doesn't impact us just yet. After five turns it will. So we'll just go back out of there, say goodbye. And so this is now going to start to become something that will then end up sort of going through there. Hi Andrew, saying another great Age of Wonders saga. Yes, yeah, so it's, this is just the, um, the beginner's um, scenario, basically, that we're playing. Now, that's, it's a random map, so it does change each time you do play it, but it is very, very cool the way it does work. So let's go and start to, um, let's, well, let's take our forces across and we'll just start to move our way and build our third city. We have still actually haven't built the third city. I should have normally built that city a bit earlier than, what, than where we are right now. We need to have a hero to be able to do this. Bring that one through. Bring that one up. What have we got left? Bring that one through as well. Free City can be integrated. This one can be integrated if we wanted to, but I won't worry about it. And, yep, it's okay. Now the spell is ready, Astral Blood. We hadn't actually done this one just yet. Well, what we'll have a look at is if we go and have a look at our our units, for example. So if we have a look at um, at for example, uh, this is Helene the Arrow Slinger. She's part of the Destined Humans that we can sort of see in through this side. And when we have a look at them, you can see the traits. They've got fast recuperation and adaptable. And so she's one of these. So we'll just have a bit of a look at her. I don't think we can, yeah, we can't zoom in on her at all. So that's um, that's who she is. If we now go back, we've now been trying to cast this astral blood. This is a this is a, essentially a um, this is going to be applied to all of the destined humans. So we go spell ready, and we only have the choice of who we're in control of. So the destined humans are the only one we have control of at this stage. So the way that actually I should explain how this works. If I just go and um, I will transform this one into astral blood. In fact, you can sort of see them all in here. Uh, if we just go transform, their blood is going to change, and they're going to have now um, sort of magic now running through their through their through their veins, and so these actually get critical hit chance when spells are cast. So we've got a fortune attunement, and this will actually start to play a big bearing in the in the battles that we do. I'll just click on close, but what we'll now find is when we have a look at her again. Oops, hang on, just quit out of that one. We can then see that she now has that uh, that astral blood now running through her because she's part of the destined humans. And when we have a look at the destined humans, actually I can show it from here. The minor transformations, we can have as many minor transformations as we like. Uh, and there's a fair few of them in the game, but astral blood is the first one that we actually have. And so the minor transformations, as I say, we can stack them up. You can only have one major transformation. The keeper is who's in charge of this particular group. So destined humans, Alfred Elderstone is in is basically the um, is the the ruler that has got the most of the actual the, the groups. If you, in fact, if you cover over keeper, it tells you the race keeper is a ruler whose empire has the biggest presence of a race um, through own cities and vassals. You're always the keeper of the race you start with. To become the keeper of a race, you need to have 40% uh, of the race's population in your empire. If the race already has a race keeper, you need five population more than them to take it from them. To become the keeper of another player's starting race, the player would need to, def to be defeated first. So the race keeper is the only ruler who can apply major race transformations and minor race transformations. So this goes across all of the members. So if we go to any of these guys, in fact, if we have a look at this at the archer, the archer also then has the same astral blood flowing through the veins. Where it doesn't actually do it is going to be things like, for example, the spider won't have it. Um, these are all part of our faction. Just trying to think if there's anyone that we got that wasn't part of our faction. And I don't think there is. Oh, this one here. So this one here is actually just a nymph that we picked up. And this is just a support unit, but it's not actually of any of the actual races. And so this one doesn't actually have it. So it doesn't get the benefit of, of those, nor does this one over through this side. This one here is this is actually this is interesting. This is the uh, sh the Orcish Shadow Dwellers. Uh, we got this unit from them, and this one also doesn't have it. If we go and hover over that one, 
There's no keeper for this one. So if we controlled the most of this population in cities, then we would actually have those. If we go back across and close that one, for example, and have a look at the race that's over in here. So this is actually the, the dark elves that we actually have. And we have a look at this one through this side. These are elven overseers. And you can see they've also got like a, a race transformation. Looks like some sort of gold or copper skin or something. If we hover over them, you can see there's no keeper there at this stage. Yeah, gold touched is the minor transformation that they come with. So they pick up gold, extra gold, uh, just by being essentially made of gold. And so that's the, that's the group that they actually have. And so that's sort of how they then work. And in each of these will have the same, same transformation of being gold touched. So cool, this game. God, it's so deep. Spark's saying, do you think minor transformations should be limited as opposed to being able to apply to anything and everything? I think it's good, actually, the way they work. I don't like the unit transformations with the um, with the cost, the, the actual upkeep of unit in, enchantments. For me, are just too expensive. I don't like them at all. Uh, so I sort of hope that that can be modelled out of the game at some point. <laughs> Still getting archers from there. I might just go and grab another... If you're getting a pyromancer from there as well, that's good. Just double check and see. Yeah, we've got the bathhouse coming. I'll just keep it going with the with the amount of gold that we actually have. Now, we've still got uh, spells ready to cast. We've got three that can go back through. Now, we don't have anyone else that we can apply astral blood to at this, at this point in time. We can summon a lesser magma spirit, and I will do that as well. So we'll just start to now build up our armies to get ready for the for the wars. What we ideally want is a minimum of five stacks of six to go in and actually start a siege. Uh, that gives us spares to be able to then switch things out as, as units become, um, become damaged. So we need to sort of go and do that one. We've now also got Conjure the Amplification Pylon has been researched. So we'll go into new research. Uh, here we go. We're actually up to the next tome as well. So we're into the tier two tomes. Uh, at the moment, we've got the Empire Order Affinity of 5, Nature 4, 2 Chaos, 2 Astral. Now, I think we've only got one of the... Yeah, the, then we go into the Shadow, the Tome of Necromancy, which we don't want to do that. I think we'll give that one away. Tome of Revelry, we'll give that one away. Some of these are good, uh, like the uh, Iron Golem would be good to get if we went with the uh, Tome of Artificing. In through this side, we've only got one materium slot. The the uh, artisan armaments in through this side, seed ma siege magic, is a good one as well. Uh, but we won't worry about that one just yet. This one is more the uh, I haven't played with this one very much. The Tome of Winds. It's a bit underpowered by the you know I, I don't really find it being all that useful. So I haven't really bothered with it. These are uh, we've got Zephyr archers, which are which are they're good but really nothing much else is in there. So I won't worry about those either. Tome of Glades, there's a tier two. So Leaf Skin is a minor trans a race transformation, uh, which we won't worry about. I think we'll just leave that alone as well. And this is um, this is where those nymphs are coming from in, in this particular Tome of Fertility. Animate Flora. Don't think I'll worry about that either, to be honest. Tome of the Beacon, so we end up with Blessed Reinforcements. This is a city spell. Get Blessed Souls, Covenant of the Faithful. So units recruited through the Rally of Legions from the target city. Faithful already, that would actually not be too bad. It gives us, and target vassal city grants us 10 Imperium each turn. The Lightbringer is a good unit as well. That's a um, sort of like a, a, it can actually convert units across to your side, just temporarily for the battle. Mighty Meek is also a good one for if you've got like uh, low level units. So uh, plus one spirit damage on attacks for each unit tier of the ta of the target. This is a unit enchantment to any of the ones just tier ones. And the uh, divine beacon. Uh, this is a uh, summons a divine beacon upon casting at the start of a turn. It just gives us like within a two hex radius, we get extra temporary hit points, so a bit of healing essentially. Um, it's not bad. Uh, the next one across the tome of the Inquisition. This one would sort of be more sort of what we're going for. We can get the Inquisitor. Yeah, I don't know, actually, out of these two. Tribunal. Maybe this one, I think. So we can get Zeal. So we get the Order Affinity, the Tithe Collector as well. Gives us extra gold. Uh, Zeal, so this one, base attack, gains plus two spirit damage. This, this damage is doubled against uh, condemned units. 
So this is a hero skill that we can then go and apply. I think we'll actually grab this one, actually. So if we select that, so we'll get that one. Uh, Spark saying that uh, Zephyr Arch is a great cyclones of fun uh, from that book if you're able to cast multiple spells in a turn and want to uh, group up enemy units for, for a big spell. <laughs> uh, Skedek, how are you going? Yeah, I saw I just have a bit of a look. Inquisitor Zeal. So this is a unit enchantment that actually is applied to uh, ranged units. There we get accuracy and see which makes the base attack to deal extra spirit damage. Mass condemnation. We don't need that just yet. The Inquisitor is a good unit though. It can stun units. I think I might grab this one. Oops, just need to grab come on. Pick it from the side there. There we are. Um Hi Andrew. Actually Andrew has seen that before. Uh, yep, yeah. so um yeah, with the number of uh, transformations. So if you have multiple minor you can apply all of them. Yes you can, yes. And you can go back and pick up tomes that you skipped over as well. You can go back and get the earlier tomes uh if you're wanting to. So you can sort of you know, like depending on how you want to build things, let's just go into here. Just grab that so we just so we can see what's going on around the place. That looks like the edge of the map there. Let's just come back across. We'll end our turn. Now the Silver Pond is the fairies again. Just have a bit of a look around under here. See what we can find. Move these through towards the where the fight will start. Grab one of those archers, place it with that group. Just move them through. Now we've only got 20 siege points in through this side, so we're going to have to be a little bit careful with this. We might start to just ramp this one up a little bit, try to get a bit more than just the 20. It essentially means that we're going to be able to hold on for two turns before we need to bring an army back, and we're going to be a bit further away than two turns. Bring those in as well. we our turn. So again, the green, the green symbols that we see through here, they're all friendly. We can ask these to leave. Um, I think I'll just leave them where they are for now, though. We can sort of pay them to, um, to leave that location. In fact, we might just go and do that. So we'll come down and we won't attack it, but we'll essentially walk in and, and, and talk to them about, about exactly that. Get the pyromancers coming back down this other side. Yeah, we've got a farm in there. This is exactly where we want to have our next city. So we'll start to um, to destroy everything. Yeah, we'll be wanting to switch a few of these out now. So this free city has now also become a vassal. So we've got a lot of vassal cities, uh, the way that we're going at this stage. Okay, so we can now can summon the um, Lesser Magma Spirit. I'm just going to press page up, go to the one above, we'll summon that one in, summon it in anywhere. New Empire skills are available. So we're going to get more and more of these. Uh, what does this one do? So shock units, shield units, and polearm units gain more experience. Uh, this one here. I might go that way. That's going to get us through our, our research a bit faster. 
and this will give us plus 20 combat casting points. I'll grab that as well. That's going to become more and more important uh, as we sort of move through the game. So we'll close that one. The Inquisitor has now been uh, been researched. Now we've got the uh, Amplify Mines. So this is a city spell. We've got Burden of Guilt. Um, yeah, it's an enemy army spell. I don't think I'll worry about it. I think we'll go Amplified Arrows. This is another unit enchantment. It's going to cost me a little bit of upkeep. Uh -huh. now, in terms of this, I want I ultimately want these to sort of end up um, splitting up a little bit. So we'll, we'll sort of remix our forces. What we might do is just come back through. Just see if we can find any loot. And our turn here. You can see that we've got the little red arrow now coming down with, with uh, Brogdor. Okay, name day celebration. You received an official invitation from a friendly magistrate of Pedestal. The great King Alfred Elderstone, we're Pedestal, hereby humbly invite you to join the name day celebration of our ma magistrate, uh, Skylian Ariel. So anyway, we can order the finest artist to paint a, a flattering portrait of magistrate. This will then give us better relations with them for 18 turns. It's not critical anymore. A uh, small trinket will suffice. So let's just go and um, let's just do that one there. We'll spend a little bit. Whoops, I, mean, I accidentally clicked on the other one. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Oh well, it won't matter because they're already vassals. So we're not going to gain anything there. Okay, there's a special resource there. We'll just go back across. The drama will be if there's a beast and we have to then come back past it. Here we go. So what do we got? We've got um, vassals uh, gain plus one allegiance levels when first vassalized. Converting conquered cities into vassals takes negative one turns. Now, again, I don't need it anymore because I've already done all that. Um, all of your units instantly gain all, gain all hit points and gain a rank. I'm not going to worry about that one either at this stage until we require it. Amplified arrows. Now we can actually now go and cast that one. So mass condemnation and the signet of knighthood. It's another unit enchantment. Stand together, which increases uh, damage dealt. We've got a fair few of these that would actually do well with that one. So let's go and grab that one. So the orders required in here, we'll just move these forward. So we've got a Pyromancer and we've got ourselves a Lesser Magma Spirit. Now I want both of them in with the heroes. So we'll take the hero. Let's not worry about the spider this time. Got a defender. We want the defender. Probably don't really need the bannerman. Actually, we'll grab the spider as well. We'll just go and get those in there. So that's a group of six. Now these will start to pick up the experience by having the hero there. Let's have a bit of a look to see what we've got. If we build a city here, this would be a nice spot for it, I think. So let's just move her into that other location. Click her again and just build an outpost there. Now We've already got one that is now going to build with the wooden walls, which will, is, which will be good. So we'll go and grab that one there. This will ultimately then be made into another city. So with that one done, we can still come back and attack this. This is a safe battle, so I won't play it out. I'll just come back across. And we'll let them go and become plus five better. So they've now disappeared and we're going to then be able to get a farm at that location. A few other spots down there that wouldn't be bad. Yeah, some of these these are already high at, at their highest level, so we'll just move them off. Um, actually, that one's also at the highest level, so we'll move that one out and move this one in, so it can just pick up the experience. So we get to plus two experience per turn just by being with the heroes. Aww. And we actually want to ultimately get these in there as well. That one's already at the highest level, so let's just go and get these up. That one can't reach, but this one can. Just come down and clear out gold mines and things just so we can sort of uh, claim this territory for ourselves before we wander off. Okay, the orders here. Now 
and we're just going to go into this one through this side. And so when we come and talk with them, uh, we can arrange a diplomatic audience to um, uh, attack or disengage. If we just open up the diplomatic audience, we should be able to... St I don't wonder, wonder if we still get that one or not. Do you think we still get the benefit of this? It's saying occupied. Oh, hang on. We need a hero. That's what it is. Now we're going to get a hero pretty quickly anyway. So let's uh, let's just disengage. We'll have a hero soon enough, and then we'll just be able to move them off from that particular spot. So the hero will appear back at Florin uh, once we actually establish this other city. Hi, availability. How are you going? So when you have an outpost, we automatically get the um, we get the uh, the wooden walls. So I'm just going to now go and found a city of destined humans at this location. So we'll go and grab that one. Next turn we'll have that, and then we'll get another hero back over here at Florin. Now I could still get the hero early if I wanted to. So if I go across and recruit, I've only got two available. So I've got like a Nile Frostling. Actually, I've got, no, I've got more than that. I've got two already out there. These are the uh, Pairing Awakened, Elven Overseers. So these are all the ones that are available to me, the Barbarian Orcs, and then these Destined Humans ones. So we can sort of pick these up. These are only level three. So Duelist, we think we saw this one last time. And then we've got the Specialist Engineer from back in here. Um, yeah, I don't think we'll worry about that one so much. Strike. I'm looking for um, things that boost these affinities, if we can get them. Preacher, yep, that's okay. Actually, um, while army leader units in the, in the army have faithful and zeal. Spell thief, yep, that's okay, and arrogant. Just close that one off. I won't worry about them. We'll leave them for now. New rally has now started, so we can bring in other units. But uh, actually, we've got a Dark Knight, which is a shock unit. That's not bad, actually. This is the Elven Overseers that we sort of saw there before. Um, I might grab that one. It's got a bit of. It's got like twenty upkeep, and we've got an Awakener as well. And so this is actually one that's coming through from the uh, Purring Awakened. We we're going to be able to get our own of these. But, um, yeah, to Battle Mage. I might as well grab it, actually. I'll, I'll grab that one as well. This one's coming from Pedestal Underground. Uh, the others I won't worry about. Yeah, there's nothing much there that we really need to get, so we'll just leave. We'll just grab those two there. Bring them into our city. And... Um, Bring this one down. Mm -hmm. If I can bring the main hero down as well, don't think we don't know if we're going to get the actual attack. I oh, know we're not going to quite make it. Um, I'll just get close, and then we'll sort of uh, we'll just do the attack with some of the others. This one over through here again, plus three gold per unit tier of units killed in combat. I won't worry about that one either at this stage. Um, Eklon can annex another province. So we might as well just head out towards this other side, although we do actually have more conduits. We want to get more, more of this. In fact, I should have cleared these, these out. I was actually heading over to do exactly that, but I didn't in the end. Uh, outpost has been founded, which we're now converting to a city. And Florin can also grab another province as well. Let's just get another of the... Actually, this one over through here. We've got... Um, didn't clear this out either. I'll keep on getting mana, although the gold mine wouldn't be bad in here. I think I might, I'll grab, grab another quarry there. I'll just go that way, because at least that one's been cleared out. Let's 
I'm not going to be able to take that out. No. Let's leave that one where that is. Now I could go back and, and clear those out with these units. We might do that actually. Just get that group. Got the chaplain. Got the inquisitors. Let's go and grab one of those. And back over here as well. Another Inquisitor from there as well. Okay, there's nothing bad from there. I'll come around the corner before we actually sort of expose this one over this side. And wind our turn. up and just clear out the um, the rubbish from around us. Okay, so we've now got the hero offers, the, the ones we sort of saw there before. Now, none of these are really all that impressive to me. Yeah, this one's War Mage. Magic attack steal plus 10% damage. So while army leader, all tier one units in the army gain um, plus 10 hit points, plus one defense and plus one resistance. That's actually not bad. So this is one of the barbarian orcs. Um, then we've got the destined humans, which... Yeah, let's not worry about those either. Let's get a battle mage. Let's go with this one here. Bane Desard, or Bane de Shade. So we'll ins inspect that one. And um, it's got Magecraft of two, Lightning Evoker, Distance Evoker. We'll recruit this one in. So this one's not of our same faction, but it's uh, certainly come in with, uh, like this is an elf, like a dark elf that we've actually now, that we've now got. And so we'll now go and ask these to leave. And so, um, would you, would some food persuade you to leave this location for us? And so we can just basically, like, growth in Florin will be blocked for one turn. That's fine, we'll just do that. So they go off, give them food, and they're all still happy. <laughs> Job done. I don't know why we had to have that animation, but anyway, we did. <laughs> it, it, we did, and it's, and that's, and it's done. Uh, what else have we picked up in here? This one in here. So this is, um, cities may, may expand to provinces located plus two province further from the center uh, I've got 295 I think I'll, I don't think I'll worry about that one just yet spells are ready to cast so we've now got um, the amplified arrows we do want to do this one this will be fairly fairly good equal one produced a mint, uh, mint in this side so we now just go back across so again more gold coming in the granary would give us more growth I might grab that because we can get that one in just a couple of turns Let's just go that way. I did mean to start to get things like these extras to get their fortification health up a little bit. The arcane battlements be another plus five as well. We'll get other options as well later on. Okay, so here's our new city uh, back in Quentin. Now we need to add in that last one as so Bane de Shade is going to now become the uh, the governor of that particular location. And uh, in here, uh, we just want to st just start the process of building this city up. So we just go across and we'll start with the storehouse to, just to get the food <coughs> in that instance. Just bring this one in close. That way we get all three of these. Just do a quick save. It's going to auto combat unless we end up with a, a bad, a bad situation. But then that's all okay. Just close that one off. Bring that one through. Bring 
them through, and then we can just deal with this one as well. I'll just do auto combats all the way through here, unless we actually have, a, as I say, a bad, a bad run with these. Got the layer of silk. I don't think I'll even worry about that one. We'll just clear these out as well. Okay, Quentin has been founded. I can get basic things in from here. Um, I'll grab another archer. And what we want to do is just check out what this is, but I want to be able to run away out of here if, if we run into any sort of trouble, if we sort of uncover a monster or something. Let's see what we get. Now we should, that, that grievance should be, yeah, here we go. So that's why I did it on this side, where I can run away, other than if I did it there, it, it would be able to catch me. But now it won't be able to. So we'll just get out of there and just keep on scouting around. Okay, there's the capital of Arctica. Spell ready, the amplified arrow. So this is now gonna be applied to anything that's got archery associated with it from our from our group so um, this will give lightning damage and also then we'll pass on to other ones now this is going to then start to really drain our mana uh, we're going to get like the uh, unit enchantment upkeep is going to get higher and higher with everything so if we just close this one if everyone can see what's actually happening with uh, Brodgar we can now see it's we've now got a moderate war justification balance it's now at 41 so we're getting extras in through this side so um, uh, and so we've got like the, the fabricated one is with the Brodgar Rage Taker is plotting to take over all the free cities, so that's been fabricated. And if we go across and declare justified war now, uh, we'll see that the alignment now goes the other way because we now are in a position where, it, like you know, according to the, the rest of the world, we've got full justification for actually taking this war on. So it's going to change our alignment to make it um, to make us good. We're actually fighting for this for the side of good. <laughs> and even the even the relation with uh, with vassal cities is going to go up. So everyone's excited for us to do this one. So we can declare war whenever we feel like it. So I'm just going to I'm just going to go and uh, abort this for now. Uh, we're not ready just yet, but we're nearly ready. In fact, we probably we'll just clear out these areas in here to start with. In fact, underneath there is um, fireforge stone. Now, do we already have that? Yeah, we've already got one, so we don't actually need that. I'll just leave that one where it is. But we will claim this this iron deposit as well while we're here. Um, I'll just grab that one now. Okay, that's all right. We'll just close that one. And we've got a demoralizing mask. So melee attackers have a base 60% chance of, of, of gaining despair. So we'll uh, open the hero screen. Now it opens up with him. We've got this one already, which is the visor of far sight. Let's go and change that one across the demoralizing mask because he's the one that actually does go into melee attacks. Close that one off and then we'll just go back to our heroes again and we'll go to Bane de Shard. So we'll actually go and inspect him. Give him the visor of far sight. Is there anything else we can put on him? No, that's, not, that's pretty much it. He's got the frost orb. Don't think there's anything else we can. We do, do have other things we can make use of in here, but I'll, I'll just keep that going. Where he's just going to be a battle mage. Actually, I didn't think of that. I probably could have got another uh, another fighting unit if we if we if we wanted to. Now these in through here. Bring these across. Yeah, no, he's got all his points already allocated. Okay, so she's now leveled up. And we'll just keep on going and getting more of these. So Feudal Ruler, adjacent friendly units have 10% damage, Mending Touch, Strength Training. Yeah, we don't really need any of this stuff. It will go back up. Got the 
defense. We've got fighting. It's for melee. Searing weapons. Let's grab these. Get the burning. Confirm that one. So she's now got flame arrows. Select new research. Inquisitor Zeal. This is another one that goes onto the range units. So our range units are going to become very, very powerful. So here are the two that came in with the um, Rally of Legions. So we'll uh, we'll move them down towards where this group can then start to come together. And then we'll ultimately just uh, kill off these two so we can actually sort of expand into those territories and then swing back and just kill off all of these as well. Okay, so these have now done. And if we have a look and see what's happening with this one, yeah, we're now, now at negative 500. So we've got a lot of things sort of now going against them. I think we might declare war soon enough. Actually, I'll just have them join up with these. In actual fact, those three there alone should be able to, to defeat these fairly easily. Both lots of those. Yeah, so I might just send those three off, which means I can then move these six to go off and, um, and kill off the other units that are back up this way. Hi Isaac, how are you going? Um, and Sunny Bits, Isaac saying, is there anything stopping you from selecting every low tier tome that gives you a weapon enchantment and having your basic troops armed with super weapons? Nothing at all. In fact, um, that's actually something I'm actually, it's funny you say that because I'm actually just thinking of doing exactly that the next time we can get a tome, is going back for the one that gives me extra range for my ranged units, <laughs> which is a tier one tome. And uh, we're beyond the tier one tome. So we'll do exactly that as well so that you can sort of see how that one actually does work. Just send our turn, turn here. Okay, so True Shot Reforged, um, obtain, so when the Aris Slinger approaches you, okay, so we'll, I shall aid you, um, we'll get a mystery bonus, we'll go that way, so what do we need to do? Oh, we do need to go for this one here. All right, well, look, in that case, this group is sort of ready to do it. It's a bit, it's a safe battle, but it's not a, it's not a one-sided battle. So all we have to do is basically just go back and claim this. So we'll get rid of that. Okay, so I will just let them run. That way we get we go even more good. So we didn't have to fight for it, but we don't control it yet. So even though I'm in there, I don't actually have any control over it. So I'm just going to go and create another of the... Um, oops, hang on. Where are we? I'm going to build an outpost, and then we'll have control of it, and that will be that that particular one will then be satisfied as well. Okay, um, this group in through this side, we'll just auto battle this one. Not a worry, close that one off. And I'll leave these in here. Uh, and what I think we might do is we might actually start the war now. Now we're playing on easy mode, so this is not gonna be hard at all to do this one. Where the, where the different difficulty levels kick in is just how much that they can produce. And so we're not going to see massive armies wandering around in this mode. If we were playing on hard or brutal, we would. Uh, but in this case, we don't have to worry about it. But this is, it's still a good habit to get into having at least three together. So this one will come back up. And um, I don't think we can actually move that one any further at this stage. Uh -huh. No, we're at the end there. Uh, but we can ultimately have three stacks in through there, which will be nice and strong. Uh, I won't declare war just yet, but we will soon. This group in through here can just come charging on through. It's a safe battle. I'll just auto this one. A little bit of damage done to our um, our Dark Knight. We'll close that one. And uh, we'll also then go and kill this one off as well. So we'll close that. All right, they're done. Sorry, there's uh, work happening outside, so it's a bit, uh, bit noisy. Which is why I don't usually record at this time of the day. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go up, start in here, and we'll swing back around. Now, we've got a lot of archers in here, but these archers have all got those different abilities. 
like the fiery arrows, the uh, amplified arrows. So these are very, very strong. Went to produce the storehouse. Actually, we can now get something else. So I think what we'll do is we can get an, a farm there. I might just grab the farm, I think, just to get the growth. So let's go that way. And when we come back in, we can get the vendor boosted because it, it, of the farm and the workshop. If we go with the vendor, that'll give us more gold. Produce the granary back over here. Um, yeah, five more turns and then we're going to get this one boosted. Let's go with the Caltrop stash. Got the bathhouse back in here, that makes it even happier. Which means more gold for us. Now the monolith requires one conduit. Now we will we will get that one soon. In four turns. But now we can go and get the citadel, so we can actually go to this next level. Let's go and grab that. These are all healed up. We'll see what we're up against in terms of the orcs. Just come through the middle here. Okay, we'll end our turn. saying another thing don't forget about the tome skills for your heroes i haven't quite figured out why my heroes uh, are, are leather gods or, or scrubs but i think it's uh, unintended synergies with my tome picks <laughs> uh, do you like this better than age of wonders three yes a lot better actually i think it's very very cool hi pickle father how are you going um okay so with a fire forge stone we now essentially have this one through here what do we pick up we end up uh, you will gain the hero item true shot which is a um a tier four um is that a bow yeah, it's a bow. Okay, well, definitely, that's going to be great, actually. So that will be awesome for her. Uh, carry true shot to the glory of the destined humans. So all cities of the destined humans of your empire gain 33 city stability for set only six turns. Hone the skills. Um, we don't need that as such. Train Helene so she's got enough to rank, to go up a, a level. That will be probably better than anything, to be honest. Let's just go that way. So... Um, yeah, hang on a second. Just, just make sure I didn't get a message. I did. Sorry, I'll just check and see, just make sure there's nothing I'm supposed to do. I'm sort of technically at, at work. Um, let me just see. My wife just told me. Oh, that's all right. It's a different day. <laughs> just got someone coming, but it's uh, not today. All right, uh, fire phone storage has now been acquired. Uh, we've got the hero level up with her as well, so she now goes back up. She now has zeal, which will give me more spirit damage if we go that way. Archery two, plus ten damage, plus ten accuracy, which would be fairly cool as well. Um, also have she's actually level seven. I forgot to do this one before. So we have mana unchained. We won't worry about that one. Reckless rage. We won't worry about that one. Warding bond. Um, yeah, we won't do that either. Mass rejuvenation for any units in a 2x radius gain 10 temporary hit points and regeneration. Restoration. Yeah, so we can actually bring one back from the dead. So we'll definitely grab that one. That's that's a good one for us. So we'll grab restoration for her. And in terms of what we have down this way, we've got defensive training, which will give us defense and resistance. You know, I might actually do that. I'll just grab that one. So we'll close that one off and continue on. Um, so, uh, yeah, so Atonomical is saying a question. Uh, how does trading work? If you trade away a surplus magic item for 200 gold, is the 200 gold all you get? And is the trade treaty uh, is indefinite? So if we go to, sorry about the noise outside. He's um, uh, just moving dirt around, but it's um, he's on concrete. So the scraping you're hearing, that's what it actually is. If we go to this city and through here, for example, we can go, click on trade. And so with the trade, uh, the only thing we need to really trade for, we've got a duration, 
we get like f extra food per turn. So if we pay 21 for 10 uh, per turn for, tw for for 10 turns, we're going to get 36 food extra per in that period, or we can do it for knowledge for 61 per turn. So that's how the trade actually sort of works through there. If it was something like, in fact, I don't think it's anything because once they become vassals, you just get all of their like, you know, the special things that they have, like there's a, a special flower underneath there. So we, we end up getting that anyway, the rainbow clover. So we don't have to pay for that once we actually have that once they're vassals. But that's sort of how that trade works. If we went into, say, Attica and went to negotiate and went to, for example, their items, they've got an arc fire orb, a battle axe and an, and an avenger axe. So there's a trade value. In that case, we would then just be paying the money and that would be then gone and we then get the item so that's sort of how that negotiation would then sort of work so it's sort of two different sorts of aspects but if you have if you have a resource you don't lose the resource by trading with it uh, I don't th if, if we get to negotiate for example magical materials so we can actually uh, select an item so we can actually go across and trade these if we wanted to so um, so we can actually sort of trade these away. Now I think actually maybe we do need extra ones for that one. Haysbury, Silver Tongue, and Archon. Let's just, let's just cancel that for a second because we've got more than that. So it must be um, Focus Crystals Five. So we've got two of those. We've got the one Archon. Oh, that must be all that it actually requires. Yeah, we've only got the one Haysbury. So we can actually still we can still trade the goods that come from that without actually losing the item. Here's uh, a couple more figures wandering around. So Quentin's now produced the vendor. Uh, we we'll get the workshop. And there's really nothing we need to do down there, so I'll just leave that one where that is. I don't even need this at all, to be honest, but I'll still just leave it there. Um, I think it might be time to declare war. So let's go across and um, so we'll start the war now, even though we're not quite in the right position, but uh, we're close enough. So we'll just go across and uh, go across to this one. So we're getting worse and worse relations with them anyway. We have moderate just justification, so in this case, it, it's you know considered good for us to do this. Um, so that's fine, and we're we're certainly on the good side. So we'll declare the war. Very well, Alfred Edelstone. He says, "Regretted teeth. If it's war you want, a war you'll get. Call the banners." So uh, that's all done. Just say goodbye. And so now we're in a state of war with the orcs. Uh, now, there's a few different things we can do. We can besiege their territory. One thing we need to have a bit of a look at is to try to figure out what they have control of. And if they've got things, for example, like um, spell jammers or anything like that, we're going to need to either destroy them or sit on top of them. But if we pillage what they have, it's a great way if you're playing an evil faction because you, you go more evil the more pillaging that you do. So we probably won't end up pillaging, but we will actually just come and have a bit of a look to see what we can find. Bring these across. So we're not seeing anything there just yet. She's a couple of turns away now. These guys are going to have to come back down and join back up. I'll just do an auto combat. That's okay, close that one off. Clean this one out and this one as well. And there's an Inquisitor, that's good. If I go there, I drag this one into the fight as well. So let's go and do this. I'll just try and auto, see how we go. Yep, that's fine. Just close that one off. And actually we can keep on going and, and grab this one as well in the one go. Yep, everyone's good. 
We've got a ring of flanking. So, um, yeah, yeah, when flanking, I don't think I'll worry about that one so much. I'll take the reward. I mean, if we were going to do it, we'd do it on Alfred. Actually, that's not bad. Uh, maybe we will actually put the ring of flanking on. So he can sort of try to get in behind other units when he does his charge attack. Okay, we're now very good after declaring war. So we did actually do it with justification. So this is good. The um, people are going to like us even more. <laughs> so, uh, yep. Now there's a couple of city, a couple of units groups in through there as well. We'll just say goodbye. So we can sort of see that there's two, two stacks of something there, but we don't know what they actually are. So I think we'll wait for the other stacks to arrive. Now we did get tranquility pool as now we've now just attached, attracted that one as well. Um, Inquisitor zeal. So this is a unit enchantment. So we'll select new research. Here we go. We're now getting the next tome. So let's go back as an exercise, even though we can get like a tier three tome, we can go back to the tome library. And if I just go and click on the actual tome, so they go into the, into the correct order, there's some that will give us extra range, or there's one that will give us extra range. And it uh, happens to be down in one of these. No, it's not, I don't think it's Tome of the Rock, Tome of Enchantment. The Seeker Arrows here. There's only a tier one tome. And so there's some good stuff in here, like there's uh, Spell Tempered Shields, these are unit enchantments, and Seeker Arrows, which are also um, unit enchantments, which give you one extra range. And because our archers are becoming so powerful, we can go back to a tier one tome, even though we're up to tier three at this point in time, and select this and actually go back and grab this one. So we're going to do exactly that. We also have Sundering Blades. All of this stuff is going to be really, really useful for us. So we'll grab that one. So rather than going to the tier three at this point, we're going to go back to tier one. And there's the seeking arrows that we want. So we'll grab those. If we now go, we've still got 102 up through here. Let's just go across. We've still got more unit enchantments that we can do. So we actually have Inquisitor Zeal. This is a unit enchantment that goes across our ranged units. That's a unit enchantment as well. Grants non-feudal units stand together. We've got a fair few of these in our army. Now that's going to be a unit upkeep. There's a fair few of them that get that one. Let's get this one first. Okay. Now sometimes the the uh, units have got sort of like the, they've got the ability to hide in the forest. We don't actually have that, so we'll uh, we won't worry too much about what's happening there. Now that's an independent city. That is, um, I think it's an independent city. Yeah, the Overlord is uh, Brogdor. And so that independent city is the vassal of the Orcs, and so we're at war with them as well. Just keep on going through this forest. And there's more movement over here. We can just start to see different things happening over time. Okay, yeah, there's nothing, nothing else there, really there to worry about. We'll just have a bit of a look from the other side. Now, they're not moving off. We do have two f very good stacks there. Okay. Let's just keep on moving these up. start to bring these across. So we've got a very, very strong army now. Don't worry about that one. We'll now apply the Inquisitor's Zeal. So we'll enchant that one. So it's going to cost us more and more mana whenever we do these upkeeps. So we'll close that one off. And what do we have over here? This is... Um, Gain 20 more grievances against players with an opposing alignment. I uh, won't worry about that one either at this stage. Cities that share a border with the Throne City gain plus 10. I'll grab that. So we'll throw that one in there. 
I've got the uh, Caltrop stash. Just keep on getting more stuff. Grab the convent. I won't worry about getting any more units here. I've got enough. So we now have Seeker Arrows, so we'll select new research. Uh, I've got the Burden of Guilt. It's an enemy army. This one sustains spirit damage and actually slows it down. This way we can sort of grab them. Um, it's suggesting with the exclamation mark that this is the one that would be a good one for us, but I don't think I'll worry about it. I'll go to the Tribunal to, to give it better, uh, better um, uh, happiness in the cities. I'm not going to rush in just yet. I'm just going to wait until we've got the support. We don't want to end up in a position where they can surround us and, and attack us with with multiple stacks. We don't know what else there is around the place. They'll be sort of coming home now anyway. Let's move that one along the road. Move that one through. And move this one up as well. Okay, the next one that we have is Seeker Arrow, so we'll go and now get Seeker Arrow, so we'll actually throw this one in there. So anything that's got like a ranged attack will now even move even further afield. Here we are. So it's costing us more and more with the upkeep because of these different abilities. Produced an Inquisitor back into this side, we'll just rush him through the middle. And we've got the Citadel in here. So we should be able to get even better things, like the Academy is boosted. It's giving me plus 20 knowledge, so we'll go, go that way. Uh, Quentin, bent down through this side. It's just the new city that we actually have. Now we can go and get... Um, what do we need? I think I'm going to grab more mana. So we'll just get a Conduit at that location. And... Actually, I didn't get anything boosted. I should have checked to see what we could have got boosted. Uh, we'll go with the granary just to get more growth. Haysberries have been acquired there. Mm -hmm. Which we already had anyway. Let's uh, hmm. move that one down to be with that group. and pass the other side. We'll just keep them where they are. Uh -huh. And uh, turn again. Well, we're pretty much now ready to start to move towards the everything, but we want to still want to keep everything in proximity, so maybe just one more turn just to get everyone together. We're seeing movement now in around here. And then we'll do the siege of the actual city itself. I've got Tribunal, Chain Lightning, this is another unit enchantment, let's just keep on getting these, this will make the, um, some of our units a bit stronger. Just keep these in proximity with each other. through. Got the convent in there, we'll just keep on building stuff. We get the citadel now, so we'll grab that. Okay, we can grab yet another province. Now it's suggesting that we go with a farm in here, or a farm in here. Uh, let's go for the farm in this one. So it's, I'm just going to follow what the AI is suggesting at this point in time. Florin can grab another province. We want to get another conduit up at that location. Uh, this one in through this side. It's not really suggesting anything to us. Let's go this way. 
grab a um, grab a forester, I think. in through there. All right, here we go. Right of Autumn. From the tangled depths of the wild near your city, Florin, the, attack, the crackling song of an autumn fairy entices you. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Let Florin off, uh, offer its harvest to the land. So growth in Florin is blocked for two turns. We get a nature boon. All cities in the empire gain 13 city stability for six turns. Use some harvest instead to curry favour with the Autumn Fairy. You gain an Autumn Fairy. I think that we might do that one. So let's go and grab that. So we actually have this Fairy unit. These are quite strong. Just fly that one down towards the um, towards the main group. Alright, so we now have some pretty strong stacks coming through. Let's move that one back into there. Um... Now these aren't, yeah, these are all sort of slowly picking up um, abilities. We might chop and change these a little bit. They're, this group is actually fairly good. But this group here is it's okay, it's okay, but the um, I think I'd prefer to have one of the archers move across with this particular group. So let's grab those. In fact, I may even ditch the Inferno Hound. And we'll pick up yet another archer to just go in with that group. I'll take her, her, or that one, the. Um, keep the Defender out. Actually, I'll, I'll keep that one coming because when they're with a the hero, they're going to keep on leveling up and I'd like to get this one up and get it to a, an evolved state and with this one here we'll just go and uh, where do we leave that other one grab the fairy put the fairy in there We've got sort of like fairly basic units in this particular stack, so this will be sort of like our spares. And so we could, we could have gone and um, and grabbed these and gone onto the farms and actually sort of, you know, I'll just show you how to do it. You just go and, and just pillage the pillage it there, but it's going to change our alignment, and I prefer to be trying to stay good, so I'm not going to do it. But we do get gold by doing that. So it is a very viable strategy. So I'm going to come down. This is going to be a very, very strong stack, ultimately. So let's go and start the siege. Now, the siege is basically we've got like one area around the middle of the actual city itself, and then the six around that middle section are also part of the city. So we just need to have one unit go and attack that part of the city. You can see it's got 55 um, siege points essentially on the city itself. You have to have a hero to do this. Now the 55 means that we, we reduce it by 10 per turn natively, so it's going to take six turns to break through with that one there. Um, and uh, yeah, it's got a, like a lot of population, so we'll just start the siege. So the siege has now started. We've got two siege projects that can be added. And so at the moment we're doing 10 per turn, 10 fortification damage per turn. So if we add siege projects, these cost us either gold or mana or a combination of the, of the two. You can see through here, for example, if we go with undermining the walls, it's going to cost me 100 gold, but I get another, it'll go from 10 to 13. So we'll go and do that. So it's now 13, it's now five turns until the breach. So, um, and if we just go and add another one as well. We've got two of, the, of these that we can add. Now, they do actually have Ballista Towers, and we may decide, look, let's try to protect our units from the uh, from the Ballista Towers. We could go with the Tower Bombardment, which will then halve those. So let's just go and do that. It only gives us an extra one, so it probably won't change the, the actual number that we have in through there. Oh, it did. Actually, it's now four turns. We've got 14 per turn coming through, but we will actually only half of these will then be part of the actual siege. So we've got to wait now four turns. We'll just close this one off. 
and um, and then we just need to have the other sort of hovering around, you know, within three or four of the actual attack. Ultimately, when it does, when it is going to go in. Um, now, what did we pick up this time? I can use teleporters. We can gain plus one siege project slot. That would have been handy actually before we did this one, but that's okay. Um, locking and shuffling research skills. Does, it, I don't tend to do that one anyway. Uh, research city structures cost 50% less gold. Let's do that one. We'll still grab it. Just close that one off. Spell champion shields. We've now sort of got that one as well. Uh, mass condemnation. You'll go that way. And put this guy coming back in as well. So move that one up. And if we just go back to our spells. So the unit enchantment, we've got the Signet of Knighthood. This one's going to get the Stand Together happening, or the Spell Tempered Shields in through here, which will give extra resistance to the different shield units that we actually have. So I'll get the Signet of Knighthood. So we'll grab that one and end our turn. Hi, Master Lith, how are you going? So, um... I was like saying upkeep not a big problem. You only need 18 units here. We don't. We've and we've got we got a real lot of mana coming in at this point in time. So you can see the city's under siege. There's some movement back over through here. At the moment, all they've got is just they've left one unit back in here, because they really can't compete with the stack that we have now. As long as we stay within range of the city, I can actually start to move around the other side of the city as well. Just see if there's any other threats. In fact, there's their leader. So if I go off. I can actually attack this one. I can I can move into there. Now there may be others. Let's just move across. I'm not seeing any others. Let's go and kill this one off. When we kill a unit off that's actually the leader, it will then go into what's called the void. So if we have a look at this one at the moment, he's active, he can cast spells and do other sorts of things. Just click on goodbye. Now I'm gonna be able to hang on, just that always happens. If we go in and both of those will actually be part of the attack. Let's move this one around as well. Actually, we probably want to move... Well, ultimately, it's actually this one here that we want to be moving in, but um, we're not going to really get a chance to do that. Let's move that one across. That one's going to be outside of the area. I mean, this is going to be overkill. Let's just do that. as well. So we've got a, a massive army here. Now only three can actually be in any of the attacks at a time. Mm -hmm. So these have run out of out of movement but I'm just going to grab uh, Helene and just have Helene go in on it herself. So this is a very very one-sided battle. Again I don't think I'll actually play it out. So I'll just do an auto combat. So this is he's level five so uh, Brogdor is the uh, is the commander. Yep, no real damage. Just close that one off. And then we get a message that um, the ruler Brogdor Rage Taker has withdrawn into the Astral Void. And if I go and click on that one, it just disappears. If we now have a look at it, and I wish it would show you that he's in the void, but it doesn't. When we come into here, though, it does, because we can sort of see that he's actually now the ruler is in the void. And so when a ruler perishes during battle or otherwise, they will be cast into the Astral Void. If that ruler still holds their throne city, they'll materialize there in three turns. If that ruler has lost their throne city, their empire is defeated. So all we have to do now is just take their capital, and then we then beat this particular this particular unit. While in the void, the ruler's empire is in chaos and subject to the following penalties. So we get minus 20 city stability in each city. As I think he's only got the one city, actually. Governor bonuses are not applied. Research is paused. No spells can be cast and the active magic victory spells are cancelled and their progress reset. So all of those sorts of things, he's, they've not gone far enough in the game yet to, to try to get a magic victory. So he's now been, um, he's now in the void. So there's no spells that can come back from them. So it makes our battles much, much easier against him because he can't cast the spells. Now, in terms of the siege itself, um, I don't know if it'll sort of show us in through here. When you besiege, 
siege projects during a siege. So if a city has a wall structure and you, uh, and you wish to conquer it, you first need to besiege it and breach its defences. A, a siege can be initiated by attacking, which we've done. Uh, while of sieging the city's uh, fortification health is lowered by the siege's fortification damage, which is what we've done. Siege projects can be used. It's not telling me what's happening in the actual city itself. Yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't tell me what the benefit or the impact of the siege, but essentially they're... Their production is, is, I think, halved all the way through, so everything is actually half in the city itself. So I'll close that one off. So he's in the void for three turns, and we, he's going to come back just in the last turn when we go in to actually attack it. We've got the Signet of Knighthood, so we'll actually now cast this one on these different units. We'll enchant. So these are now going to get the uh, stand together with everyone else. Go continue. Now we have Mass Condemnation. Select new research. And we now are back up to the next uh, tome that we can now sort of go and grab. I don't mind this one. The, the phase beasts are good. Um, let's go back to the order, see what we end up getting here. Healing Spires, Keeper's Mark. That's a very, very good one for us. Um, I think we'll go back and get, we'll go for Keeper's Mark. This is another unit enchantment, which uh, essentially means that our units don't die initially. Uh, any of our melee units, they, they, can, they can sort of stay alive for one extra turn. So let's go and select that one. It's very frustrating fighting against that because you sort of you can't quite finish anything off. <laughs> and we'll go exactly for that one there. and unlock the seat of order. We can now start to build these if we wanted to, which I won't worry about at this stage. Now we can't add siege projects to the actual siege itself. Yeah, it looks like they've wandered off somewhere. There's no one in there. This is very one-sided. Sorry about the noise outside. Keep that one coming. Might go back in the water actually with this one. His main army should be around somewhere, but really we're going to kill him off completely because this is his throne city and he's going to come back to the city in a turn or two. Won't worry about that one either. So Equilon. Got arcane battlements. Go with the knowledge, I think, at this stage. Well, this man is going to take a bit of time. We'll go with the monolith. We'll get more territory. Suggesting that we go this way. I'll, I'll take it, the suggestions at this point in time. Right, so these will just hover around until we go in for the fight. <clears throat> One more turn. Now he isn't still isn't he's still in the void. He'll be back next turn. Empire skill, we had this one over through here. And completing a province annexation summons an animal. Yeah, I don't think I'll worry about that one either at this stage. We'll just close that one off. Spells, we've got the, the spell tempered shields, let's go that way. And so we'll now cast these. So the, any of our actual shield units will now actually have uh, better resistance. All of these do help. It just costs us a lot of upkeep. Tribunal, let's go that way. Just get back in the water again. Now, 
know, one more turn and then we basically kill off the orcs. What we might do is we might start to now look at Artica. Yeah, this is negative 200 now. So we'll start, we'll make a pronouncement. We'll make a declaration of rivalry here as well. This one's now going to cost me 300. So we'll go that way. And um, we'll also fabricate a grievance as well with her against her. Because we've only got a minor war justification, so we'll actually get ready for this one. We'll sort of roll straight into, into war with her once we finish this other one. And um, getting that justification is actually quite important. Here he is, he's back. So we can now cast spells. He's only on his own, so this is really just going to be very, very one-sided. Let's just go and kill this one off. So we go in. Um, basically, it's, uh, yeah, this is very, very, you know, like this is extremely one-sided. I did want to show a siege, and this is really going to be a shitty, shitty way to show it, unfortunately. I, I will go do the manual combat just to go through what the different parameters actually are with it. But, um, yeah, there's not going to be anything for us to really worry about in this instance. So when we come in, it's not our turn at this stage. He's then going to come all the way out. He's gone into here. And he's attacking that particular unit. So all we have to do is kill him off and that's basically the end of the siege. But you can see there that there's these um, ballista towers which are um, sort of positioned across through here. I thought we did something to... Yeah, we got rid of that one. And we got rid of that one, yeah. So they've only got half of them. Anyway, let's just finish finish him off. So with the siege also, some of these actually fell down uh, with the way that we had started everything. We can, with if we had demolisher units, we'd be able to then demolish these as well to sort of open things up. And there could be other protections, but he doesn't actually have anything on his... This is the Dark Knight who can come in and do a, uh, a big attack in behind. So we'll just go and do that one. I'll just finish him off. This will take no time at all to do this. Yeah, we've got someone undead. We won't worry about that one. Now, Alfred, we ought to do a big, a big damage in here. And that'll then kill him off, and that'll be the end of it. All right, done. So we'll just close that one. It was extremely fast. And so celebrating the defeat of Brodgore Rage Taker. So you've crumbled the last defences of Brodgore Rage Taker and cast him into the Astral Void, banishing him from this realm. Uh, so blah, blah, blah. We receive 101 Imperium. Hold a parade to celebrate the triumph. Uh, spare no expense. So we receive more Imperium, but at the expense of gold. Or we can actually siphon off the Fading Fertility and... Um, and sort of we go with minus 10 alignment, which we won't do. Spiritually guide uh, Brodgar into Mage Haven. So we get a plus 10 alignment through the side, but we do lose 161 mana, which I can afford. Uh, so let's do that one there. We'll just go even more good. Okay, so he is now gone. Uh, this city is now under our control. Um, and it's one that we still have to then sort of deal with. So, so Brodgar has been defeated. Um, if we go to Keeper's Mark, we have this one. I'll just... Go and select something else. We go with Sundering Blades. City awaits its fate. And so with the city itself, we can now either vassalize it, we can raise it, but then that will give us negative 20 alignment. We can absorb it and it becomes one of our core cities, but we're already at the maximum number of cities. And we, or we can migrate this one across to Destined Humans and we still actually then control it, but uh, we go with negative 10 alignment. It, it can just mean that it's a bit easier for us to then manage, but we're just going to vassalize. Now, this city is not going to be all that friendly with us. Like if we go and have a look at the city, uh, in fact, we can't see much about it at this stage, but, but they'll be negative about us for a little while. And then slowly over time, they'll then just become a more useful vassal, but it does take a long time. So he's now gone. Um, got the granary back down this other side. I'll just get anything at this stage. We're sort of getting towards the end here. Getting close to victory. So we'll... Um, We'll just wait until we fabricate that particular one. We don't have to keep any forces back in here. They don't rebel or anything. Just move these all off now. I 
guess the interesting thing is that this particular group is no longer, uh, we're still at war with them, but um, they'll sue for peace. This is just an independent city back over there. I'm going to ignore them because Artica is, like the, the objective now is to get to a Druin and kill Artica off if we can find her on the way. Just make sure there is no one else. No, that's the edge of the map. That's okay. Okay, we'll end our turn there. So Screaming Palm is saying, I miss city battles with walls and gates. I don't know, look, it's there faster with the way that the game does work. So the greater good. Your advisors mentioned that Florin announced uh, costly plans to import food. So we gain more stability there. Spend even more. We've got, you know, I'll actually do that one. We'll just keep on getting better alignment. I'm just going to rush through a lot of these. Now she's insulting us. Because that gave us even more grievances. Yeah, we've now got moderate grievances. Okay, well, we can declare a justified war now. So, um, base, base global income goes up by 10%. Relations with vassal cities goes up as well. Okay, done. We're at war. <laughs> okay, so um, just say goodbye. And so, as long as we had that sort of like that moderate reason to do it, uh, we're okay. So, let's move these off. our hordes sort of uh, charging up through. Just got to find wherever she is. Yep, just say goodbye. And I'll just quickly sort of rattle through whatever we can get in through here. Another province. I'll just get another one of those. Oh, I meant to get... Oh, no, I've already got that one. That's okay. The province up this way. We'll just uh, get the connection. Let's take your research. Awaken tools. That's a city spell. Healing spires. Grab that. through the turns now and head towards victory so we're going to need to have um, now who have they got we just want to we, I'm looking at at the symbols up through here to see if there's any wings on anything we've got got two they've got tier two units in there let's like this is on we're playing on easy mode so we really don't have to worry too much about anything so let's go and move this group off with that group actually what's that one got Maybe we won't do that one. There's a very, very powerful group in here. Let's move that one up. Just need to have some sort of hero go with this one. I'll take this one up. So the, the our, our leader, Alfred, can go after Rat Pike. And the other three can go after... The other groups can go straight for the capital. Go for Druin. So we'll move them off. So this is a, going to be a little bit susceptible. Potentially a bit of a problem, but we'll, we should be okay. So this now has been released as a vassal, but if we have, have a look at the actual city itself, you can see it's negative 200. It's going to take a, a bit of time. I'm going to give it one of the Whispering Stones that we actually have. So we'll now give the Whispering Stone across to it, and then that will actually help to uh, get it to become a vassal in like 10 turns. It's going to be a little bit of time to do that one. So it can still dislike us, but it will it will start to sort of change its relations with us slowly over time. So it's not happy because of the war. Again, there's a bit of interest with the way that, that one does work. Just get something that's not going to take. It's going to take a bit of time to get. All right, nothing else down there. Turn. They're moving off to raid our territory. 
So they're coming in with a couple of a couple of units there. Well, let's move these off. Um, we're going to take a pyromancer and two of those, and we'll move them down to get rid of the raiders. And we'll move the rest of these up to besiege this city. So we're only sort of seeing one stack there. Um, that should be okay. I'm not seeing any other real movement up this way, but this one's a long way off. Just bring these three up. Let's move this one across. Now this is usually a bit of a mistake to split up your forces like this, but we'll just see how we go. Yep, Domain is being invaded by this group. By the way, if we're trying to figure out where the enemy is, like this, because quite often they'll end up landing all over the place, uh, just zoom out until you can start to sort of see, okay, there's something over here. Don't know what that is. But there's some movement out that way. We've got that unit in there that we know of and nothing else we have to worry about. So we can very quickly sort of see what's going on. I think what we might do is go and grab another... Actually, with this one here, I can still get more units. Let's get an Awakener, get one of those, bring them back to the Throne City. And um, also in the Throne City, we'll just go and grab ourselves some more archers. And I want something that's going to take a bit of time. Just grab that one there. In here we'll grab the Inquisitor. And then we can just use these units to clear out and help help these actually sort of hunt things down. Actually the new rally has just started, that's good. <laughs> that came just at the right time. Stone Mason in through this side. Let's get the market, get more gold. Should grab the library as well while we're there. Right, we'll end our turn again. Now they're more likely to try to um, destroy our, our what we've actually got. Now we're still not seeing that one didn't move, so when we go back, it's it's not actually moving as such. And we're going to get the other group coming in this other side. Spells ready to cast. Keeper's Mark. I'll grab that one next. Just keep on going up this way for now. I'm just trying to get through this one fairly fast now just to finish it all off. It does get a bit grindy. It's another minor race transformation. It gives a spirit resistance and status resistance. So let's go with that one as well. We're closing in on the, uh, on the capital. Yeah, and there's a, a number of different sort of stacks in around there. So looks like we're coming up to a fairly major fight against uh, against Artica, but we do actually have three very good stacks in here. Uh, we've got some you know some good combinations. Putting on as many archers as I would like. But it's not terrible. And we've just got a handful of just tier one units in through there so nothing much at all so we'll start the siege it's only gonna be two turns to do this one they've only got the palisade really it's uh, they've only got like 10 uh, I just need to do anything and I'm gonna be able to sort of bring it down so if we just undermine the walls get 13 actually it's still gonna be two I'll just close that one end our turn Like Keeper's Mark to everyone, Enchant. So most of our units have now got Keeper's Mark, which makes them much, much more difficult to kill. Uh, recruiting units uh, during the Rally of Legis cost minus 50% gold. Yeah, let's do that. We'll grab that one. It's been quite useful. Now, can we start the siege? We can, actually. But when we look at it, if we go back out, there's actually five stacks in here. This is why you want to have more than just the three that we have. 
So I think we might even start to move this one up just to join up the others with the others. Like these would be quite useful to help out. Um, I mean, if we're going to leave them alone a little bit. Yeah, these are now trying to break through there. We do actually have the groups that have now ap ap appeared in through this other side. We've got one that can move pretty quickly. So let's just go across and clear this one out. So this one's going to be a fairly easy battle for us. So it hasn't been able to destroy that just yet. Let's just do an auto combat uh, because we should, we should win this one fairly easily. Yep, no problem at all there. Just close that one off. And um, then we'll start to bring this one. Actually, we could even bring them into the water and bring them across the other way. I think we're going to take this one up the other location. So let's move it up this way. And what have we got in there. Yeah, no, we've got a fair stack there. We'll leave this group together. But again, it's a bit dangerous having just a single stack like this, but because we're putting such threat on their capital, um, they've got to be a bit more careful. So we can see what we can find. So there, there's Artica herself. Yep, with other heroes. So we can start the siege. In six turns, so we'll we'll get these we'll get both sieges sort of done. So we'll add the siege projects. Again, we'll just do the they've got towers, so we'll get rid of the towers. We'll undermine the walls down to five. Break the battlements. Actually, that might be idea. Actually, we'll, we'll go that way. So we're down to four. Okay, so we'll close that one off. Now what? Often the AI will do is come out and if it's got enough units, it will then attack us. I don't think it does have enough. There's one at the back, one there, and then there's uh, th and that's only one there. So they've only got two and a half stacks really in around this particular city. So we're actually we're actually stronger than them by a fair distance. Now, of course, we're we're playing on easy, and that's why that's why that's the case. Uh, if we're playing on hard or brutal or something, it's going to be very, very different. Like they'll have heaps and heaps of units. Okay, end our turn again. Now they didn't do anything. Cult of personality. Raise your tools and build the future of the empire. So we receive production. Yeah, we'll do that. I won't worry too much about anything. We just really are now in the finish. This one's now been breached. Uh, this will be an interesting battle, I think, because it is just fairly even sort of stacks. So we'll attack this one. So here we go. It is a safe battle. I'll still do manual combat, though. So Analogical saying, good evening all. Are we, uh, are we doing the tutorial scenario? Yes, pretty much. It's the first one. The, the tutorial, though, is more the uh, second one, actually. So you're better off doing that one. Now these are their uh, skirmisher groups. Um, actually, so we've got uh, Screaming Palmer saying industry plus nature makes me cry, as in uh, in a bad way. <laughs> I don't like the nature tome; it's my least favourite. So we have um, now we've only got the one stack that's coming through here. Now he can go and charge into any one of these and do reasonably big damage. Uh, I can kill that one off pretty much straight away. Now I do actually have this fire spell here, which I can sort of do damage to both of those uh, shield units. Um, I can move up one and then do fairly big damage up against that one as well. So let's and this one here has also got uh, good good attacks. I think I prefer to go the other way. take them up against one of these 30% chance to apply burning he's going to get do shock damage across some of the others as well so you can see the other ones are, are reducing as well as as those hits go in now we have seduce we'll try this one and 
resisted it, but it is distracted. Now we have a um, only a 20% chance to hit that one. I'll move these up. Still go this other way. So with all the buffs that these guys actually have, they do incredible damage. Oh, that was a bad miss. Yeah, we're not going to be able to kill that one off directly. We can get close. I can't kill any of them, so I'll just go this way. I, always, I thought I was going to at least do double the damage there, but I didn't. Let's just leave that one back. So Artica is casting spells. I didn't bother casting any of mine. Should be pretty one-sided. Now they've kicked in. What I can do with this one now is to use this big combination spell in here. Just cause burning. We do actually have a fair few of these ourselves. I think I'll use the Ignite spell, which is very, very strong. Kill that one off. So when we use spells, our fortune goes up, which means that we've got a better chance of, um, of getting critical hits. Okay, that one's been killed. We do get a really good shot against this one as well. So we've got uh, heavy, heavy charge strike. Um, yeah, critical hit chance of 40% when I press the control. So we've got a, a good chance of doing even extra damage there. He's not going to be in anyone's way if we do that. In fact, if I smash that one, it's only a 20% chance of actually hitting that one through there. If we want to see why, we can just have a look to see. It's obscured by obstacle, and it's also got negative 40% of long range times two. Because we're at maximum range there. That one there is also long range, but it'll still be okay. Should then kill that one off. And this is a critical hit as well. This one nice and close. And this one's getting ready to run, but we'll just kill it off. With Alfred. <laughs> Alright, that's one of the frostlings gone. So we'll close that one. That was a very easy fight for us. And so again, uh, we're just going to have uh, what to do with this particular city. Now, our ruler did level up, so we're just going to oh. get him. He's now level 8. Sanctify. Precision training. Actually, that wouldn't be bad. We'll grab that one. So we get more criticals. Close that one off. And what have we got this time? Mines grant plus 10 draft. Don't really need it, but I've got heaps, so I'll just go and grab it anyway. Close that one off. City awaits its fate. And so in this case, we're just going to vassalize this city as well. Which is sort of like the good thing for us to do. As in good alignment. Um... Again, I'm looking for things that are going to take a bit of time. I actually can grab the, get the shipyard. I'll just grab that one while we're here. I'll get the stone walls just to boost it. Not that we're going to need to do it. And people. So do research. Here we go. Another tier three. So we're rattling through these very, very quickly. Um, yeah, we'll get the phase beast. We'll go that this way. The mage who 
fully utilizes the potential of magic to expand their tactical options on the field of battle. up just embark and we'll just go across the ocean uh -huh. okay believe in peace again that just makes us a little bit more good see there with the easier play they haven't really cleared out much in their own territory so they don't play they're not very optimized with the way that they do play but it can still be difficult if you're sort of new to the game I'll just leave these together we need to keep them sort of in close proximity how are we going is this still negative 200 yeah no, it's getting better and better the relations are slowly improving over time Search. Got to awaken tools, amplify minds. Just grab that one for now. Uh, we've now got the anointed people, so let's go and grab that one. I think, the, I think the game will be over before that one actually does come, to be honest. So we really only have got two more turns to go, and it should be should be game over at that point. another independent city back over there okay, we can't go onto their territory Pathing is pretty bad in the game. It, I mean, every Age of Wonders game has had troubles with the pathing of units, and uh, this one is no exception. And uh, turn there. There's only one more turn. Quite often they'll sue for peace when they just can't do anything about it, and this is going to be one of these instances where they really just can't do much about the actual fight that will go in. We've got some good units there. Uh, this one has now leveled up, so we've now got a full-on uh, magma spirit, no, no longer just the small one. So that's actually good. One more turn until the breach. Might bring the chaplain out, and I think we'll throw in the um, that, that unit there. It's only tier one, but it's very, very strong. those bring them up okay this is now a vassal city of ours we have got silver, silver tongue fruit yep that's okay don't have everything just yet new empire skill um, we don't need that when you win a battle, you have a 50% chance of... Yeah, I won't worry about that either. Just close that one off. So we'll just rattle through these now. It's all happening very quickly. I'm just really grabbing... I'm looking at what's taking the longest and just picking it. Just so we don't have to worry about it too much. We are running out of money with everything. Again, I'm not too concerned about what I choose in here.
one more turn and then we can go on the attack and then we should actually have um, our main guy up there as well at, the, at that point uh -huh. right here we go now they've sent off or gotten rid of their other other units so again this is gonna be an extremely easy attack um, it's a shame actually I sort of uh, I I don't like playing on easy mode because um, it is too easy, but it's uh, but it's not bad. So this will be for the game. This will be to win the game. So we'll uh, because she is inside her capital. Um, I'll just bring this one up, and when we go in, it'll be all three heroes. So we'll just go in and uh, we'll play this one out. And uh, yeah, very very one sided. We'll just do a manual combat. Okay, so Mathis is saying that there's also a late game nature tome that hurts enemies and transforms the province into forest. Yes, yeah. So there, I mean, there's. I just, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what it is about the the um, nature tome that does doesn't. I just don't like it as much as I do with the other tomes. Yeah. Now we've got the Inquisitor who can sort of stun these units or just attack them, but we'll just um, we'll go in and stun. Oh, hang on. No, we can't actually... Um, we can't do it with that one there. Now, the Awakener. Let's use the magic bolts. Take that Battle Mage unit. This one here can do the heavy charge. Bring the defense down a little bit. The dark elf mage that we picked up, and then we've got our special, our super archers, which um, really do a lot of a lot of damage. Oh, got our own guy! <laughs> not good, not good. Bring this one around. ways away when you give someone a bit of a wrap. I've only got one. I'll just take it into here. Okay, we've almost got that one down. Um, the Magma Spirit. Here we go. We can kill it with the Inquisitor. So we can just come charging forward. And that's, that's their hero down. Or one hero. We've still got the leader at the back there. Artica herself. Archery here. Now we've got a, a group of ice spiders there, which we're going to have to be a little bit careful of. Let's just go that side. I'm not too worried about what we're, what's going to happen in here. Got a Twenty percent chance there. I'll just I'll take it in nice and close. Missed. Pretty much everyone. Oh, hang on. Yeah, we can't do any spell casting on the first turn. So 
they're just helping each other. That one's now webbed us. It didn't freeze us though. quite bring, um, this one's not going to get a chance to do much. You could come in and, and kill this thing off. So look, I'll do that, because I've got nothing else I can do with him. Uh -huh. so two shots there. Oh, we missed and hit the one behind. It's not a bad result, because I can still move into the middle and, and then put pressure on both of those. Let's do that. I can kill that one off. the archery here. We also have the spider flute. I don't know if I don't move, but I think the archery is going to be better a better job for us. Wow. Two grazes at 80%, so we rolled pretty poorly there. Let's bring the, um, the small group in. We can have them charge off. But before we do that, let's see if we can go and get some criticals. It's, uh, that's not bad actually, and that'll give us enough then to kill it with the uh, spiders. those frost bolts but they're not going to do much damage although it was a critical hit um, now the fire damage will actually be f actually this one's more this one's not fire I've got a pyromancer in here somewhere get way back over here so it's not going to get a chance to do anything as well. Put the one behind. Alright, I should have done that, that earlier to get the fortune coming up. Yeah, we've still got this one here that can then go in against Artica. Alright, this will be for victory. Hit. Can we need our turn there? That one's down. She's now burning. She's regenerating though. Let's kill it off with the dark, the dark night. And this is the, this is the ending of the game. So final, uh, final siege. Very easy one for us. We were playing an easy mode. <laughs> So uh, that's her done. We didn't really lose anything much there. A bit of bit of damage done. Just close this one off. And that is victory for the game. Now, when you have a victory, uh, we've got uh, essentially you end up 
with whatever faction you took in will then become available in other in other things. Now we just use one of the standard uh, groups, like one of the one of the ones that the game actually provided for us. So the victor stands proudly upon the remains of the enemies. Uh, you subjugate this world. So that was only turn 57, but it wasn't easy. So you subjugated this world through force as the empires of the past did before you. When the dust settles, you will discover whether you, whether your course was just or if you merely uh, fanned the flames of entropy. You can show the journey. So we can see exactly what actually happened over time. So if we sort of zoom out and have a bit of a look to see, that's Artica. This is at the end there. But if we go back to the very, very start and, um, and have a bit of a look to see what went on, this is actually the three different uh, empires that were there. We just start to play. So over time, we can see expansion. So we should get our second city before they do. Yep, so our second city is there. Artica will expand pretty quickly. This one doesn't. So even by this stage, Artica is still miles behind us. Then she gets her second city at that stage, but this one's already well established. Now she gets a third city, I think, before we get our city over here. This is often interesting just to sort of see what the AI does. And on easy, they're not they're not as yeah, we've got our third city already. Artica should get her third city pretty soon. But we, we sort of, you know, we, we won pretty early on really, just with our expansion. It's funny, I thought she had a third one. Maybe she only went for yeah, that one's now been wiped out. Now yeah, they only had she only had two cities, okay. Well that wasn't good. And you've then got different rankings and things you can have a look at as well, like diplomacy, you know, sort of who who did what during the game, uh, the economy. Again, we sort of dominated that with sort of like the very, very dark red. Expansions, you can see there through there, as, again, we dominate through that one through there. Military, we dominate pretty much the whole game. Uh, research, dominated that one as well. So again, on easy, all of those things are fairly simple to... to um, to manage as you sort of go through. Uh, I'll just click on done. Now, when you do get a victory, you then end up getting what's called the Pantheon. So, um, as proven he's worthy to ascend, so his conquest of the realm has given him a chance to ascend to your Pantheon. Uh, Would you grant uh, Alfred Alderstone this ascendance? Yeah, why not? So, we'll just accept this. And then he becomes sort of like a character that we may come across in future, um, in, in future endeavors. So, we'll just go accept. He can become, for example, a hero. And so this is the Pantheon. We went up with th plus three different level, level of Pantheon points. And so everything we did then leads to different types of things. So we got victorious, so we end up with 500 points for that one. But even if we didn't have that one through there, we can still get a lot of points just by, you know, heroes defeated, we got four of them, so that's 40 points. Uh, heroes gained a level, we got 14 level gains. And so even if you don't finish off a game, always surrender because you, you get these points and then these unlock things as well. And so as we go through the various unlocks, like this one unlocks at level 24, so this one did just unlock the realm of, realm of Immortals. So I've got one more down here unlocking at 28, so two more turns and I then get this unlock, the Desolate Realm. And I've now got three more that I can go and spend in, down in through here. Now one thing I was hoping to get was this Chosen Destroyers, the Warlock Culture trait, so we'll grab that one. Um, that one down the bottom there is the Godia's Crown, that's the Hero Helmet customization option. Um, I won't worry about that one so much, I don't think. Necromancer's Crown. These, a lot of these are just, um, they're not, they don't really add much to the actual game itself. Some do. Let's see if there's anything else there. I might just even go back and start to get a few. Uh, yeah, I'll go, I'll go back and get some more of these, I think. Ranger's Cape and then the, um, the Ranger banner icon, that'll do. So that's now sort of spent the points that we just uh, generated. So over time, you very you can pick up all the different bits and pieces from in here as well, uh, which then sort of just starts to flesh out the game more and more. I actually really like this idea, the way that they've actually done it, because it does keep the game a little bit more interesting. I know that other players don't like these sorts of things, but it is fairly cool. So um, I'll just click on done there. So he then ends up, that's him there, he's in, in our Pantheon, so all the victories end up sort of in through there and we're back to the start again. So that essentially is, the, is like a bit of a rundown, I guess, of the uh, of the just the beginner scenario for um, the Fields of Rebirth. Once you, you don't even have to play that one to, to fruition, I would suggest only playing a short amount of time on that one and then starting the actual the story. 
Now, I'm just reading a few of the comments there. Sorry, Maslis is saying, did you see my last question? Um, have, and Maslis is saying, have you tried not being colorblind? I'm not sure what you mean by that. I'm actually colorblind. <laughs> so I can't do that. Um, where was the question? Was that it? Um, yeah, sorry, there was a, this, a, you know, I've missed a lot of stuff in through here. As I was saying, uh, as I was saying, are there colorblind mods? There is a um, there is a color mod. I'm not badly colorblind, but I am colorblind. Joseph Jackson, my favorite is when the AI has a color that is close to yours. Uh, the misclicks drive me crazy. I haven't noticed that in the game. Um, so Joseph Jackson, saying only two two days into Age Wonders Four now, still learning, but I, I went. Um, Barb heavy chaos focus for my first win. Yes, it's um, the barbarians and the chaos is, is a really really good way to go with the rush. You can sort of rush through, uh, and and each each sort of combination does fairly well. Actually, no, that's the scene. No, my actual question is about range. Where is that? <laughs> I didn't see it. Sorry, I think it's gone off the top. I'll just see if I can find it. Uh, just move across. Oh, hang on, here we go. So you're saying, did you ever figure out if increasing range helps with um, long range accuracy malice? It looks like it doesn't. In that last one, we ended up with a double long range uh, with our units, and so it doesn't. So uh, yeah, so I'm pretty sure it actually just makes it harder to hit. But then one thing you can start to rely on, and which we didn't really get a chance to do that one, is fortune. If you can get high fortune, you can get critical hits. And so it almost gets to the point where you don't have to worry about whatever accuracy you're going up against because there's a very good chance you're going to roll a critical anyway, which means you just get the maximum, well, not, you get beyond the maximum damage, which is really quite cool. Um, so uh, Dusty Monk's saying, I don't know, uh, uh, I know you don't generally do the story, but you know uh, when you unlock brutal difficulty? Yes, all that is is the first two in here the beginner scenario and the story realm are uh, a set so they're basically sort of like they're they're designed to play out a certain way but when you go to any of the others at, at any point um, so anything else that you unlock uh, so if we go for example and we bypass these first two so one's got the book which is and this one is more the tutorial than the than the actual beginner scenario uh, that's but it's probably better to start with this one just to get used to the game, but then play this one in here. But if you go to any of these other ones, these are just random maps. So if I click on that one and select, and I can then customize, and at this point, the difficulty here will then show relaxed and brutal. So you then get brutal at that particular point. Um, if we just go back, I'm pretty sure you get it all the way through. Uh, but if we go into Valley of Wonders and select this one, I only have between easy and hard, so I don't actually get the brutal in through there. So it's anything that's like a random map. Now also, some of these, the tier three, tier four, etc., these become much more difficult uh, to actually then fight in. So the actual, the worlds themselves become more difficult. And usually with things like Domain of the Frost Queen. So this becomes, she, she's a very, very hard, now we had Artica in, in the, our current game, but she started off at the same level as us. In this case, she starts off with a massive city, two additional cities. So she's already very, very established at the start of this particular game. So these all make things really quite interesting, like just the way that they sort of have the different uh, combinations. Again, the artisan kings will then sort of give like two other kings um, with massive throne cities. So these become these are quite difficult to fight against. So, uh, but you can then just go and build your own anyway. The, the custom you know, create a realm. So that's mainly what I've been doing. But um, now the, the actual diversity of the gameplay is really exceptional. Um, so uh, okay, and we've got uh, story uh, comments saying Story Realm Five is kind of hard. I've only started Story Realm One. <laughs> I haven't played anything else, so I haven't really gone far. But but that, it certainly does introduce concept in a quite a nice way. Um, and so yeah, analogical saying I haven't tried the story scenarios. Are they worth doing? Yes, they are. Uh, particularly if you're trying to learn the game, and they are. They do have some difficulty to them. They do have some nuance to them. Uh, they they are well done the, the way that they actually have done them uh, but only in the small amount that I have actually played them but um, from what other people are saying as well they really really do like those uh, just see if there's anything else before we get going um, I think it's about it guys so I think I might leave it there uh, so thanks for watching um, hope that was helpful <laughs> uh, 
at least we got the victory and uh, so we got to go and, and finish off with the Pantheon through there. So we, I think we covered all the major aspects over these, over these three uh, sessions. So that will be the end of this little tutorial live stream. I was going to do these as a whole lot of different videos, but I actually don't mind doing it like this. It sort of, um, it means I can sort of just do it all in a very, very compressed format, which is great. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.